What up? Welcome to part one, the very first video of the animatronic servo head project series. Um, today's August 30th, and yesterday the very last piece came in, which uh, I picked up at the office this morning, which was these quarter 20 nuts that I ordered in the same order, but it got shipped separate, and they shipped it in this big box here. And this company, Zoro Tools, that I ordered a lot of hardware stuff from, they had free shipping, their prices were cheap, and I can't see how they made any money. In right here, that's a six foot piece of all thread, quarter 20. I paid $1.30 for it, and they shipped it for free in that large <laughs> container. So uh, let me just run through some of the stuff that I have here. I have quarter 20 nuts. I have these angle brackets little angle brackets and I'm going to use this tile I guess acrylic uh, the angle brackets for that I got some fine thread nuts and a rod end. the rod end used quarter 28 which is fine thread so I had to buy nuts for that um, I messed up on this this angle bracket, I thought it was just two, oh, I thought it was this piece is right here. I didn't realize this was here. And that might get in the way, I might have to cut that, but we'll see. Um, oh, machine screws, quarter 20. Um, here's these brass compression fittings, uh, quarter inch, and you'll see how I use them. Uh, the funny thing about these, I had to sign an agreement that I wasn't going to use these in like, four states. One of them was Maryland because they have something, they're not pure brass or something and you can't use them for water. Uh, got a whole packet of fender washers. That's it for here. Like I said, I have these acrylic uh, sheets and I'm going to do the base. Um, here's one servo. I have five servos and um, here's our Arduino that I hooked up with a servo sketch to test the servos. And, oh yeah, I got this EL wire. Let me plug this in real quick. Okay, there's the EL wire, it's blue. I don't know, it's looking white in the viewfinder here. But this is gonna turn out to be real cool, uh, using the EL wire. I have some really small, I believe it's 256 threaded rod and linkages for the servos. And I'm using five servos, I have three 425 VVs for all the major head functions and I have two 311s, one for the mouth and one for the eyes. So uh, that's pretty much everything I have right now and let's get started on this project. Here's a six foot piece of quarter 20 all thread. If you're wondering what I'm basing my design off of, if you Google search uh, 3X's skull, and I believe Halloween Bob also uh, is credited with this design, but uh, the, um, the basis of the design is going to be based off of the 3X's skull. So I'm going to cut, uh, this is a one foot long section, I'm going to cut a one foot long section out of here. And I'm going to hacksaw it in between these two nuts. That would be one foot. When I was telling my dad about this project, he recommended putting nuts on here and hacksawing it. That way, you can, when you untwist the nuts off, it straightens out the thread. So uh, let me cut this down. Okay, so I cut it, and uh, my dad's suggestion of uh, putting the two nuts on there worked out great. Uh, both ends of the all thread. This end, which the cut end is in the box, and the the longer five foot piece. You can thread nuts on them on both sides. So just for uh, temporarily, you know, to hold this all thread up, I put it on the Spark Fun case, and it's it's pretty stable. But once I get weight on there, it might move around some. But just temporarily, I did this to hold it up. So now I'm gonna go and put together the rod end assembly up here just to see how it articulates. Okay, so here's the assembly. This is gonna be a lot harder than what I thought. Um, I'm keeping this L bracket turned in towards the center just to keep everything in towards the center. And the back here is going to be a servo, so I'm going to leave room for that. But anyway, I decided this is three inches long right here. 
So I marked it halfway through and I decided that I was going to make this measurement here so that when it's even, the thread's going to be, uh, the pivot's going to be in the center of this bracket. So, you know, it goes like this and this, and it hits right here. So I can bring this thing up here and it'll just barely clear it like that. Well, it's actually touching it there. But you see, whenever I tilt it forward, it's going to hit. So either way, I'm going to have to cut a chunk out of here. But I'm a little hesitant to cut it now. But I'm going to have to decide sometime, you know, where, where I'm going to put this. Once I decide how high I'm going to put it to the top of the thread, then I had to decide how much I had to cut out of here. So this is actually going to be a lot harder than what I thought. And when I line it up, I had to line this up to here. So, well, that's the basis of how the three axis skull design works. You use these compression fittings to space her in the washer so that way it has more turning ability. Because you see what's keeping it from turning more is that rod end is hitting the compression fitting. If the nut was up here, you know, it wouldn't, it would only be able to turn that much. So, uh, I guess the next part I'm going to tackle before I move any further is I'm going to cut the piece of plastic and mount it on this bracket up here. So here's the plastic piece that I'm going to cut for the base. I'm having a hard time envisioning this in my mind, but I figured I'm going to have the head nod actuator or head nod servo here and uh, all the throt, you know, the throt is going to be right here and the linkage is going to be something like this. And if I had this in the back, it would hit on this. So like I said, I'm having a hard time envisioning this. So I'm going to cut the acrylic piece in a rectangle here so that this is in the dead center, this angle bracket. I'm going to have room for the width of a servo on each side and then width of a servo on the front. And then even though one won't be here, I'll have one in the back here. And so it's going to be like this long, cut a rectangle. And this will be in the dead center, this bracket. So let me get the measurements and cut it. Okay, I'm going to guess I make this and make it uh, five and a half inches wide. It'll be a little tight, but it should work five and a half inches wide. And once again, I'm going to round this and make it eight inches long. So it's going to be five and a half by eight inches. So let me try to cut this piece of acrylic. So that's it. Uh, this stuff is an eighth inch thick. I was able to score it with a razor blade, but I didn't get it perfect. I bet you if I had the right, you know, uh, triangle or a T square, I bet you that I could score, I can make perfect right angles. So it's close enough for the first you know, I'm going to go ahead and use it because who knows, I might mess up and just have to make a new one of these. But I'm going to go and see, this stuff scored real easy. It's actually a real good material. I'll definitely be using it in the future. I'm going to see if I can sand it down and make it a little more straighter. But then I'm going to go and uh, mount the angle bracket right in the center, dead center of this plate. This is a uh, five and a half by eight inches. Well, after my precise fabrication, this is what I got. What do you think? Does it look like it's centered? That's probably the best I can do. I gotta cut these off, but I'll go and I'll mount this on the rod and see what it looks like. Okay, there we go. So, originally I was gonna go and put the rod ends below this point right here, which no matter how high up or high down uh, this point is, below here is going to be the same distance. So let's, let's say I have it attached here. As you can see, it moves a whole bunch from here to up here. But I'm going to be wasting a lot of rod. I only have two of these. So 
I'll be saving a lot of rod if I put it up here. If I put it up here, uh, it still moves. Let me, if I put it like right here, it's still gonna move. So I s should have enough, uh, you know, play in it to uh, be able to attach it right here. And I'm going to add a wash. Oh, well, I'll show you. I'm going to add jam nuts and a washer up here and have the linkage attached to that so it rotates too. I'll have a 90 degree angle. I'll have two holes 90 degrees apart. One will be head nod and the other one will be head tilt. So uh, here I go. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I decided to put this, uh, I could have saved more rod space by putting this up further, but I decided to put it as close to this rod end as possible between two jam nuts. That way, when I take this thing on and off together, I know that the exact distance this has to be. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, these are going to be jammed up so this thing can spin, and I'm going to go and drill a hole in this flat washer and mount this little ball joint right here and then the threaded rod that's going to be the linkage is going to go into this ball joint here and uh, that's what's going to pivot it up and down and then when I have head uh, turn in there since this can spin when it spins it it's just going to spin this whole washer assembly so Attached to this thing is going to be head nod, and then 90 degrees, I'm going to have another hole, and it's going to be head tilt. So that's the plan. i got to drill a hole on this next and attach this.